All right, guys, so for this trick, we need a borrowed and shuffled deck of cards. So the spectator can take the deck and shuffle it as much as they wish. And once they're done, they can hand the cards back over to me. And what I'm gonna do is spread through the cards and pull out a little prediction. I just want the spectator to now think of any card. Okay, and I'm hoping that the card I've just removed was your thought of card, the Ace of Spades. Now, there might be a small percentage of you where this actually was correct, and if that's the case, then that's amazing. But um, let's just say in this performance that my spectator was not thinking of the Ace of Spades. So, okay, that's totally fine. Um, just out of curiosity though, what was the card that you thought of? And they'll tell me they were thinking of the Five of Hearts. Okay, interesting choice. Now, since you chose the Five of Hearts, we, we won't just lose it forever in the deck. We'll actually, we'll, we'll utilize it in this trick. So what I'll do is turn it over so it's facing down in the deck. So that's all you have to remember. Five of Hearts, your thought of card, facing down in the deck. But remember, you could have thought of any of these cards, like the Nine of Diamonds, you could have thought of the King of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, literally any card would have been okay. Even the Ace of Spades would have been a fair choice. But okay, Five of Hearts, we'll go ahead and remember that card. So can you do me a favor, Spectator? Just hold out your hand for me like this, because uh, I'm going to give you the Ace of Spades in your hands, just like so, okay? And just go ahead and hold on to that for me. And what I'm going to do is wave my hand over the Ace, and something kind of magical will happen when I snap my fingers. Can you go ahead and flip over the card in your hand, and they'll do this and see that now the Ace of Spades has actually transformed into their thought of card, the Five of Hearts. But remember, we left the Five of Hearts in the middle of the deck facing down. So let's go ahead and take a look where that card was. It was right here, but you can see now there still is a face down card, but it is no longer the five of hearts. It is now actually the ace of spades because they have switched places. And that right there is the trick. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this fun little transposition effect. And if you did, be sure to go ahead and stick around for the tutorial. All right, guys, so here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So this is a really, really simple and fun transposition effect that I came up with, and I think you guys will enjoy the method of how it's done. I really enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun way to practice this uh, type of trick. So yeah, let's get right into it. So it's a completely impromptu effect, which means you can completely shuffle the deck of cards. It can be a borrowed deck as well. And all you're gonna do is take the cards back from the spectator, and you're going to go through and you're going to pull out the Ace of Spades. And of course, the cards will be hidden from the spectator when you do this and ideally the Ace of Spades should be in the middle of the deck. So if it's not in the middle of the deck, just cut it in the middle like I just did. But you're gonna basically pull out the Ace of Spades and have them think of any card, and you're gonna hope that the Ace of Spades is their thought of card. And the reason why I do the Ace of Spades is because the Ace of Spades is a very, very popular chosen card. So there is a very high chance that you will actually get a direct hit, which in that case, that's a miracle. I mean, you just literally predicted a thought of card. So you can move into any effect with this card now. You can continue doing the effect I'm about to teach you, or you can just transition into another effect. You know, in most cases, they will probably not be thinking of the Ace of Spades, but that's totally okay, because for this trick, that's kind of what you want, um, because what you're gonna do is leave the Ace of Spades face up on top of the deck, and then you're going to flip the cards over and ask them for their actual thought of card, and you're gonna spread through and look for it. So let's just say in this case, they tell you that it was the king of diamonds, okay? And all you're gonna do is tell them that we can still use this card in the trick. In this case, we're gonna take the card and turn it over so it's the only facing down card in the deck. And now you're going to execute what's called the coal, which means you're going to secretly slide it underneath the spread as you continue to spread the cards. And I do have a full in-depth tutorial for how to do this slight, which you can click right up here if you wanna learn how to do that. Cause I'm not gonna go full in depth on how to do this move. I'm just gonna assume that most of you know how to do it. And I like to do this, uh, I continue to spread through the cards and I name just a couple of more random cards. Like you could have thought of the nine of hearts, you could have thought of the eight of diamonds. And this just gives you justification for spreading all the way to the end of the deck. And you want to do this, you wanna spread all the way to the end so that you can actually take that king and just replace it. So now it is the top card of the deck. But you're going to do this as you remove the Ace of Spades and show them the Ace one final time and just say, and you really could have thought of the Ace of Spades. And now you're going to take the Ace of Spades and just once again place it directly on the bottom or I guess the top of the deck. So now when you flip the cards back over, you will still see the Ace of Spades as a top card. But what you've secretly done is you've secretly loaded their thought of card right underneath the Ace of Spades. So now what you're going to do is you can either get a pinky count like this under the two cards or... You can also riffle up the back with your thumb. It's up to you, whichever is easier for you. And you can do either the double lift sort of push off move like this, where you lift the cards up with your fingers and 
press with your thumb so that the two cards will slide easily together, or you can simply move them out uh, like this. But you want to get them in the position where you have the two cards basically lined up together. You don't want it to be higher or lower than the deck, you want it to be exactly flush because what you're about to do is you're going to be asking the spectator for their hand to place the Ace of Spades in. And what you're gonna do as you raise your hand up is you're going to retract your thumb so that the King of Diamonds is going to be the card that you take out and place in their hand. But at full speed, it won't look like anything. It'll look like you're just taking the Ace and placing it in their hand, just like so. But what you're gonna do now is you're going to keep your hand raised as you place the king in their hand, because what you're gonna do is you're actually going to be swing cutting half the deck into your left hand, and then you're gonna continue swing cutting cards like this. And the justification for this, basically just have the spectator uh, place their other hand on top of their card. So you ask the spectator, can you hold out your hand? And then go ahead and place your other hand on top. As you say that line, that's when you're doing the whole swing cutting thing is you say, and can you go ahead and place your other hand on top? So that's the justification for doing that. You're just sort of using misdirection. You can either hold the deck or if you have a table, set the deck down on the table and you're gonna basically wave your hand over, snap your fingers and have them look at the card. The card is now changed into the King of Diamonds. And now you spread through the deck and the original face down card has now transformed into the Ace of Spades. And that right there is the entire trick. So yeah, as you can see, it's a very simple method. Um, nothing really to it here. It's very, very uh, easy sort of streamlined version of a transposition effect. Um, but I, I I really like this one. I think it's a fun one to practice for sure. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this one, definitely let me know. And uh, yeah, see you guys for the next one. Bye.